फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज प्रताप नारायण सोनी एंड आई एम ए थर्ड ईयर बी एस एम एस केमिस्ट्री मेजर स्टूडेंट एट आई सर कोलकाता टुडे आई एम हेयर टू शेयर यूर प्रेजेंटेशन विद यू विच आई हैव क्रिएटेड अंडर द रिसर्च वर्क एट आई सर कोलकाता दिस इज रिलेटेड टू द थर्ड ईयर कोर्स एंड आई हैव चूजन माई टॉपिक विच इज क्रिस्टल फील्ड थ्योरी एंड दिस प्रोजेक्ट विल बी सबमिटेड टू डॉक्टर परना गुप्ता Ma'am, uh, she is taking our course in the third year. Uh, the very first question when we heard about the theories and all arises is that why we need theories. So basically, we all are uh, do not like theories and we get bored by the theories and we always want to do practicals. So the answer to this question is must in this context, especially when we are talking about the theory itself. Theories are formulated to explain, predict, and understand phenomena, and in many cases, to challenge and extend existing knowledge within the limits of critical bounding assumptions. Theories are very vital for research in any field. It is the theories which provide the basic framework and give us a head start for our project or any study work. So here, this is what it want to say that theories are formulated means. what happens is that when we observe in our surrounding we just observe and start writing something and basically we start thinking about that th that thing so in our own way if we want to explain or predict about the outcomes or consequences or what is happening around us we need theories in many cases theories are just like uh, the opinions you can we can say or the hypothesis in the later word we can say that theories are just like a written material where we have our it written our own thinkings about a particular observation so how they are important they are important because to start a, anything we need these theories uh, after this th reading these theories we are going to like we dwell deep into a particular topic and we start or further project work maybe experiment or maybe a theory again so here we list the importance of theories theories are bound with the assumptions some and all because in our real world many things which are happens in a way that we cannot accommodate all the things in our theory so we made certain assumptions which made our theories and our our result better so like those other assumptions are in such a way which do not affect the result much and keep the outcome uh, as it is almost now why we need a cft so here we have two main theories when we talk about transition metals at this stage the first one is vbt and the later one is cft vbt is a theory used to describe the formation of different chemical bonds between atoms this theory explains the overlapping or mixing of atomic orbitals to form chemical bonds cft is a model that is designed to explain the breaking of degeneracies electron shells of equal energy of electron orbitals usually d or f orbitals due to the static electric field produced by a surrounding anion or anions in our case those are ligands the key difference between vbt and cft is that vbt explains the mixing of orbitals whereas cft explains the splitting of orbitals so um, this will us tell us about the difference of between vbt and cft and why we need a cft when we already had a vbt so the thing is that uh, vbt was a theory released prior to cft and this theory was able to exp explain uh, significantly about this bonding between the transition metals and ligands and this theory focus mainly on the geometry geometry of of the molecule like how the ligands are coming and in which part geometry it is forming how they are interacting so basically this theory talk about the mixing of orbitals so whenever we talk about the mixing of orbitals it's the vbt which answers our questions later on we feel the need that uh, the cft uh, there is some splitting is also happening between the orbitals this orbital is we get this data because the energy data doesn't match our, our the experimental data does not match our theoretical data calculated from the vbt because of that because of that there is a need arise of the new theory and the 
gentlemen work on it and they develop the CFT. The so CFT theory explains very well about the splitting of orbitals, which we are going to mainly study in this presentation. That how it is CFT, what are its consequences, and how it affects the uh, orbitals and the bonding in T block elements. The crystal field theory describes the breaking of orbital degeneracy in transition metal complexes due to the presence of ligands. So what happens actually when ligands are there in the molecule, the degeneracy of the d orbital atom starts breaking. So there are the bonds between like when ligand approach the metal, a bond is going to be formed. Now when a ligand is approaching a metal, the metal have its d orbitals which are degenerate initially means all the energies of those d orbitals are same, same exactly same now what happens when ligand ligand start approaching them the electron in the ligand start having some repulsion with the electrons present in the d orbital which lead to the splitting to for stabilizing the molecule Based on the strength of the metal ligand bond, the energy of the system is altered. This may lead to a change in magnetic property as well as color. So, because of the consequences of this, the magnetic properties is changes and the color also changes. The color changes because of the some distance between the orbitals after splitting, which we are going to explain later. And uh, the magnetic properties changes because of the spin. The spin of the electron as we have some pair and unpair due to the depends on the ligand which we are also going to talk later in the same presentation. The theory was developed by two gentlemen, Hans Pithe and John Hesbrock Van Black. This is a diagram which represents that how the orbitals coming close to each other for creating and making their bonds. This is for metal-metal delta bond. This is for metal-metal sigma bond. This is for metal-metal pi bonds, which we are not going to go in detail because this is something which is part of later after the crystal field theory we are going to talk about. Now basic concepts of this theory is that in crystal field theory it is assumed that the ions are simple point charges as simplification. So as I have talked earlier uh, while creating some theory we have some certain assumptions which we make to simplify our job which doesn't affect our outcome much in the for the real based a real world based uh, experiment so same in the, this case we assumed ionic uh, spheres as a point charges so this is quite uh, significantly true and uh, doesn't affect much of our calculations and our result so when we applied alkali metal ions containing a symmetric sphere of charge calculation of bond energies are generally quite successful so this is the thing i have told that the when we apply this thing to alkali metal ions containing a symmetric sphere of charge means that the charge distribution should be symmetric about the center it should be a sphere then if we apply this assumption of point charges then the bond energy calculation will not affect much the approach taken uses classical potential energy equations that take into account the attractive and repulsive interaction between charge particle that is coulomb's law interactions so the this is uh, the mainly the point charge. The theory is based on the charge interaction between the charge particle, which we the topic of physics, where we study electrostatics and uh, there we study about the interaction between two charges. So here also, the electrons in the present in the ligand and the electrons present in the d block, uh, d orbital interact with each other, which. Uh, which result into the splitting and we are going to study about that thing only. So the theory is basically about the attractive and repulsive. Wherever a force of attraction is generated, the energy is released and our molecule gets more stabilized. And if the force of repulsive is or repulsive interactions are there, then the molecule's energy increases and it got destabilized. For transition metal cations that contain varying numbers of d electrons in orbitals, that are not specifically symmetrical, however, the situation is quite different. The shape and occupation of these d orbitals then become important in an accurate description of the bond energy and properties of the transition metal compound. So, this point is telling about uh, uh, the ions which are where the distribution is not specifically spherically symmetrical. So, the thing is that if the distribution is not spherically symmetrical and we 
do all the calculation by assuming them a point are this so definitely our calculation will not give accurate answers because of the distribution is not spherically symmetrical we cannot consider them as a point charges so for in that kind of molecule uh, we see other factors like shape and the symmetry how orbitals are placed and how orbitals are actually there in the molecule and we consider all these factors and try to make our calculation as precise as we can in the next point when examining a single transition metal and the 5d orbital have the same energy when ligand approach the metal and some experience more opposition from the d orbital electron than others based on the geometric structure of the molecules so this what this is what to say that uh, actually we have initially we have a d orbital in the metal now ligands appro started approaching the metal so ligand may come from any different direction it is not any like foundations are not there so seeing uh, seeing the direction of the ligand there are d orbitals interacting differently with them like uh, suppose uh, in a particular direction the ligand is coming so that particular d orbital is not interacting with anything and uh, the line of where line of coming when the ligand is coming is interacting with a d orbital which is falling on that line so that d orbital will uh, have maximum possible interaction since ligand approach from different direction not all d orbital interact directly this interaction however create a splitting due to the electrostatic environment so that is exactly written here what i have explained now we are uh, taking a special case of octahedral geometry for our better understanding of the complete phenomena why splitting occurs now here this shape is a octahedral shape where we have this uh, structure and uh, if we join all the edges the figure which will come is known as the 3d shape will known as octahedral that's why it is known as octahedral geometry now these are the d orbitals placed on the axis this is dx square the lobes are on the x and y axis itself this is z dash z square lobes along the z axis and this is electron density this is dx y here lobes are between x and y axis dx z lobes are between x and z axis and dy z where lobes are between y and z axis to understand cft1 must understand the description of the lobes because these lobes uh, the electron present in these lobes are going to interact with the ligand which is going to come and make the bond with the atom so if we like to proceed further we must know about the these lobes how they are placed and what are their symmetries and all the, these things this is the explanation regarding that here we are considering axis like that this is z axis and this is x axis and this is y axis so x cross y z satisfy our cartesian plane criteria and this give our proper axis now this is a diagram of a case of octahedral uh, geometry where we initially we have a metal cation this is our energy scale energy is increasing as we go up so metal cation uh, we have energy as the lowest on these are all d orbitals now when i put a electron density in a spherical manner the energy increases the reason behind this is that electron electron repulsion between all these now what happens when ligand start approaching this uh, in octahedral manner six ligands will come from these six direction and this uh, result in total splitting like dxy dxz and dyz and dx square dz square so why this particular these three goes down and these three goes up because of the reason that when the ligand is coming on the x, x and y axis the orbital which is going to interact maximum is dx square y x square as this is the orbital the lobes are there on the axis itself and the another thing is ligand coming from up and down and through z axis so on z axis we have an orbital which is dz square the orbital that is going to interact max now apart from these two orbital we have uh, three more orbital which are between the axis but our ligands are approaching on the axis so the orbit lobes which are between the axis are not going to interact much that's why their energy are lesser and they are actually not interact, uh, interacting so they are stabilized after that uh, uh, the further more we uh, we take count of the other attraction forces between the ion and the electrons 
of the ligand and extra the positive charge here and the negative charge here which lead to ultimately decrease in the energy but does not affect this splitting this splitting remains same just the overall energy will decreases now we talk about the filling electrons in the orbitals now we have studied like how orbitals are going to split when we approach when the ligands will approach now we will study about the electrons how electrons are going to fill in these orbitals now according to Aubert principle electrons are filled from lower to higher energy orbital which we had studied in our previous classes that Aubert principle tells us that electrons are filled from lower to higher energy orbitals the orbitals which are present at lower energy electrons will go in them first following hunt's rule electrons are filled in order to have the highest number of unpaired electrons uh, now uh, the hunt's rule tells us that uh, the electrons prefer to remain unpaired was electrons want, do not want to pair each other which have a particular reason which we will talk about uh, uh, in a moment that why electrons want to remain unpaired so third point tells the reason about this this is pairing of the electrons requires energy so to pair the electrons we basically need the energy so that's why electron want prefer to remain in the unpaired state because they don't don't want to like uh, gain energy and uh, pair them until someone forces them to pair they do not want to pair because of this energy factor involved here now if the pairing energy is less than the crystal field splitting energy now what is this splitting energy as in delta o symbol is that this o denotes, denotes octahedral and delta o is the energy which is the energy gap between those both eg and t2g which we have seen in the previous slide this gap this gap is delta o and uh, this is the splitting energy gap this like to go from hair to hair we need to cross this energy barrier that is the delta o now then now the point this point I want to say that if your pairing energy is less than the crystal field splitting energy delta o so it want to say that uh, the energy required to pair of electrons is less than the energy required to go above to state if this the pairing energy is less than the electron will prefer to be pair because the less energy is costing there so in that case then the next electron will go into the dxy dxz or dyz orbitals due to stability so the next electron will go in into that orbital itself it will not go in the upper orbital as the pairing energy is lesser so it will pair first this situation allows us for the least amount of unpaired electrons so when the electron will go into the that orbital then the electron will be uh, will not be alone anymore and the new electrons will come in that orbital so it will be paired so in this case we will have the least unpaired electrons and this is known as the low spins because the as soon as the other electron is coming into the orbital the spin momenta is cancelling each other as they are in different spins so that's why it is a low spin if the pairing energy is greater than delta o then the next electron will go into the dz square or dx square y square orbitals so the same thing it is saying that if the pairing energy is more than the splitting energy means the amount of energy required to go into the upper orbitals then the electrons will go to the upper orbitals as electron always prefer to remain unpaired so as the energy is lesser it will go into the upper orbitals before pairing with other electrons so this situation allows the most number of unpaired electrons so, this is also an uh, obvious thing as these electrons are not going into the pre-filled orbitals they are going into the completely new orbitals they are preferring that first due to the energy uh, difference so at the end we will have more unpaired electrons in this case and the electron will be high spin as no other electron is there to cancel their spins in the that particular orbital so the this configuration will give us an high spin complex ligands that cause the transition metals to have a small crystal field splitting which leads to a high speed are called weak field ligands and ligands that produce a large crystal field splitting which leads to low spin are called strong field ligand so uh, this point wants to tell us uh, uh, this splitting occurs because of ligands because when ligands start approaching the metal this splitting occurs 
now the gap between this splitting decide about this uh, unpaired and paired electrons and this is spin energy pairing energy also so high spin and low spin complex also depend between on the gap between this uh, eg and t2g in these two orbital sets so now in this point it is talking about uh, and that gap depends on the ligands so if we have a weak field ligand a weak field ligand uh, uh, will uh, increase that uh, that the gap and this the electrons will uh, will be able to sorry decrease the gap and the electrons will be able to go into the upper orbital which result in the high spin so the, uh, by saying that uh, the electrons will decrease the gap I mean that they will decrease the splitting energy the ligands and the ligands that produce a large crystal field splitting which leads to low spin are called strong field ligands now the when uh, strong field ligand came uh, it uh, increases this gap delta o between this orbital so the electrons are not going to go in the upper orbitals they are forced to pair with the electrons so in this case we have the low spin complexes because the electrons are going to pair and their spins are going to be cancelled so they will result in the low spin complexes Okay, this is the same uh, illustration for the thing we have uh, studies this is the gap here is the gap delta o is the gap between these two orbitals now this is a case of a strong field ligand the gap is much higher than the pairing energy this energy gap so the electron is preferred to pair first uh, the energy cost is lesser here to pair and uh, if it wants to go it has to give more energy so if we give less energy it will pair up first this is the case with a weak field ligand where this gap is very less than the pairing energy very less or uh, i mean uh, significantly less than pairing energy so the electron instead of pair goes to the upper orbital orbital so as electrons also prefer to remain unpaired so they are will release like high spin complexes and they form low spin complexes because these two electrons are in the opposite spins now cft is based primarily on symmetry of ligands around the central metal ion and how this anisotropic properties depending on direction ligand fields affect the metals atomic orbitals the energies of this which may increase decrease or not be affected at all once the ligands electrons interact with the electrons of the d orbitals the electrostatic interaction causes the energy levels of the d orbital to fluctuate depending on the orientation and nature of the ligands so this point wants to tell us that the symmetry of the ligands is the main important factor while we study cft cft is completely based on that thing only because here we study about the splitting and splitting occurs when the ligand start approaching to the metal ion and uh, in metal ion we have a d uh, d orbitals are there so uh, the interaction depends on on the symmetry of those things so if they are uh, in a good symmetry in the good symmetry ligands are coming symmetrically with a particular axis and our lobes are also there there will be a maximum possible interaction which decides the further things and anisotropic properties depends on the Directions and this property also depends on all these things. The energy uh, after splitting, the energy may decrease, uh, increase, or may not be effect affected at all. So uh, it is uh, generally after the splitting, the energy decreases and the uh, orbital is split as because uh, that's why splitting happens because the molecule wants to stabilize and stabilize means the energy decreases. Once the ligands electrons interact with the electrons of the d orbitals. The electrostatic interaction causes the energy was fluctuate depending on the so as, as soon as the ligands start approaching the metal there is some interaction that the electrostatic interaction between the charges the electrons present in the ligand and the electrons present in the d orbitals also some positive and negative charges so those interaction started fluctuating the energy level of the d orbitals depending on the orientation and from which direction ligand is coming and from which lobe are there in that direction depending on all these factor the energy fluctuates for example the oxidation state and the strength of the ligands determine splitting the higher the oxidation state or stronger the ligand the larger the splitting the ligands are classified as strong or weak based on the spectrochemical series which is this 
so this is a series made created experimentally that uh, seeing the splitting uh, by when these ligands approaches the metal and uh, based on that which ligand causes uh, uh, greater or higher or larger splitting that ligands is considered as strong stronger ligand so what happens actually when a strong ligand approach the metal as we have uh, we have taught uh, in our previous we have talked in our previous slide that as the strong ligand approaches the splitting the gap between those two increases as the strong means it has a more uh, some oxidation uh, state like charge density it has more so more force more repulsion force more attraction force that result into the more splitting and more splitting more splitting will result into the will decide the about low spin and high spin complex more splitting means the gap between those two orbitals will be high and electrons will not be able to go into the upper orbitals so they will they have to they are forced to pair in case of a strong field ligands and when they are they paired they are they are generally low sp uh, low spin complexes so this is a series where the cn minus is considered as strong girl ligand means it causes means the the when cn minus is associated in the complex we have chances of low spin complexes as the electrons are going to be paired in that complexes because the gap between these two orbitals are going to be very much higher now we are going to uh, have a look at the three different uh, general complexes octahedral complexes and tetrahedral and square planar complexes the octahedral complexes we have ml6 type structure where m is the metal central metal and l are the ligands in uh, tetrahedral and square planar we have ml4 type system Now in an octahedral complex there are six ligands attached to the central transition metal the d orbitals splits into two different levels the bottom three energy levels are named as dxy dxz and dyz collectively referred to as t2g the two upper energy levels are named as dx square y square and dz squares collectively referred to as ez the reason they split is because the electrostatic interaction between the electrons of the ligand and the lobes of d orbital in an octahedral the electrons are at attracted to the axis any orbital that has a lobe on the axis moves to a higher energy level this means that in an octahedral the energy levels of eg are higher 0.6 times the energy gap between the orbitals while t2g is lower 0.4 times the energy gap the distance that the electrons have to move from t2g and eg dictates the energy that the complex will absorb from the white light which will determine the color whether the complex is paramagnetic or diamagnetic will be determined by the spin state if there are unpaired electrons the complex is paramagnetic if all electrons are paired the complex is diamagnetic so uh, in this paragraph the uh, some things are similar which have previously noticed in the previous slide and there are some important things also so these things is about that six ligands will come and these are the orbitals we have previously studied the reason they split uh, electrostatic interaction and the electrons are attracted to the axis the orbital has a low bond the axis will have a higher energy level this means the total energy level of eg are higher higher 6.6 delta while t2g is lower the energy g uh, the distance uh, now this from here the important thing came the distance that the electrons have to move from t2g uh from t2g from eg and it dictates from t2g to eg i guess there is a some typo here and it dictates the energy that the complex will observe from the white light so from t2g to eg electrons need to go if this gap is go and so here there is a transition happening here so this will absorb some white light so that thing will decide the com color of that complex so here you come a very important thing color of the complexes they are very beautifully colored complexes we notice and the d block transition metals whether the complex is paramagnetic or diamagnetic will be determined by the spin state so in this case if we have an unpaired electron left the complex will be paramagnetic as the and if we have a pair electrons in the orbitals the complex will be diamagnetic
if they are unpaired electrons, the complex is paramagnetic. If the electrons are paired, the complex is magnetic. Same this paragraph is saying. So let's move to the another tetrahedral complexes. In a tetrahedral complexes, there are four ligands attached to the central metal because that's how the tetrahedral geometry look like. There is the central point and the four vertices are there. So here the four vertices are four ligands. The d orbitals also split into two different energy levels. The top three consist of the dxy, dxz, and dyz orbitals. The bottom two consist of the dx2, dy2, and dz2 orbitals. The reason for this is due to the poor orbital overlap between the metal and the ligand orbitals. The orbitals are directed on the axis while the ligands are not. So we have studied about the octahedral. Now we have to see the tetrahedral complexes. What is its geometry? and how ligands are coming and how orbitals are splitting now see this is a tetrahedral if we consider this as our axis so these are the from directions from where the ligands are coming so uh, it is between the somewhere between the axis so there is only one or a uh, few orbitals which are between the axis are going to interact with this so it means our uh, my orbital dxy dxz and dyz are the orbitals which are placed between the axis so they are going to interact maximum when ligand are approaching from these directions so because of this these orbitals are higher in energy and the remaining orbitals are which is along the axis will interact minimum so those are dx square y square which are along the x and y axis and dz square which is along the z square so they are not going to interact so they will be at the bottom because of, they are not going to interact interact so they will have the least energy so they will at the remain at the bottom this is our octahedral splitting now as compared to octahedral we have c then it is uh, exactly opposite there dx square and dz square are in higher energy here they are in lower energy and they are dxy dxz are in lower energy in tetrahedral we have them in the higher energy because they are ligands approach towards the, like on the axis that's why uh, this thing interacts maximum while they do not interact and in case of tetrahedral the ligand approaches between the axis that's why they interact maximum and they have higher energy while these they do not interact and they have lower energy so the difference in the splitting energy is tetra in is tetrahedral splitting constant delta t. Uh, the difference, the gap between this, we are calling it delta t, where O represent octahedral. So here t represent tetrahedral. This energy gap delta t for the same ligands. Consequently, delta t is typically smaller than the spin pairing energy. So uh, it is saying the same thing again for uh, the same ligands. The generally the delta t, the, this gap is smaller. This is gap is smaller than the pairing energy. So uh, that the statement means that the electrons, the energy you require to go electrons from here to here will be lesser than the pairing energy the electrons pair. So in our case, tetrahedral complexes are usually high spins. Means the electron instead electrons also do not prefer to pair, so the electrons will go into the upper orbitals instead of pairing which will result into the high spin complex as we have studied in the previous slides now we have to study about we are going to study about square planar complexes square planar complexes is a different geometry of ml4 type system in this four ligands are uh, placed in a square planar geometry which looks like this this thing here which is central metal ion and these ligands are placed along the axis approaching the metal ion and these four ligands are placed in a plane same plane so that's why the name uh, planar is there in a square planar there are four ligands as well however the difference is that the electrons of the ligands are only attracted to the xy plane any orbital in the xy plane has the higher energy level there are four different energy levels for the square planar now just see the um, forget everything and see the structure of this com system this geometry the ion is in the central and these orbitals are along the x and y axis which is dx square y square are along the x and y 
and ligands are also coming on that axis only so we are 100 percent sure that dx square and y square will have the maximum energy as they are interacting maximum now dz square is here so it is not going to interact with anything as the ligands are not coming along this they it will have slight interaction with all these four ligands here only so this is going to be minimum and the x link the lobes between the axis will also going to interact minimum so this is what as we have predicted dx square y square is maximum after that dx y is the second maximum because these orbitals lie in the x y plane and dx y is also lie in the same plane between the x and y axis so they are going to interact more than the other lobes like y between y and z axis dy z and dx z so they are lesser and dz square interact more than dx z dy z because there is an electron density around it here which interacts more with than these four ligands so that's why it interacts more and it is uh, slightly above than the dx z dy z orbitals the splitting energy from highest orbital to lowest orbital is del sp this complete gap is del sp which in the figure itself we can see it is much higher and tends to be larger than del o much higher than the del o means the uh, gap between uh, the lowest and the highest in case of octahedral moreover del sp is also larger than the pairing energy so as this gap is much much higher so means th this is from if electron wants to go from here to here the energy we need is much much higher so than the pairing energy the energy we need to pair electrons here only so in that case the square panel complexes are usually low spin complexes because electrons uh, would definitely prefer to go into the orbit that orbitals but they are not allowed to go as the energy is much much higher before going there they have to pair here only so if they are paired they are going we have the complex we are going to have is low spin complexes now uh, this is the basic overview of the crystal field uh, splitting theory we had studied now we are going to uh, study about the consequences of this theory this theory had two main consequences thermodynamical consequences and structural consequences of the orbital splitting means what happened to the thermodynamics factors and structural factor after this splitting occurs so structural we have we are going to see first structural change occurs is the change in the ionic radii and second occurs is the john taylor effect which we are going to read uh, in a moment after this thermodynamical effect this is the effect caused in the energy and healthy and uh, there are two main basically hydrogen energy and lattice energy which changes due to the this d orbital splitting now first we are going to read about ionic radii the t2 g orbitals are directed between the ligands the two d or electrons are unable to shield the ligands from the nuclear charge consequently the ligand experience a higher effective nuclear charge than the predicted the metal ligand distance is usually unusually short and the ionic radius is smaller than expected so when we think about radii and uh, size of the atom the very first two things come in our mind is the charge electrons and the nuclear effective nuclear charge so if we have the higher effective nuclear charge the electrons uh, will be more closer to the nucleus and the size will be smaller if we have more number of electrons the repulsion repulsion screening effect will come into the row picture and the size will increase so in this case what actually happens uh, the as the reason is is written there the t2g orbitals are directed between the ligands so the orbitals of t2g are between the ligands so they are not going to shield the uh, z effective uh, charge of the nucleus means the power of nucleus to attract electrons so it becomes more powerful and it, it attracts the electron and the size decreases this is the effect of a splitting of, uh, on the ionic radius so we will expect smaller atoms smaller ionic radius size size after splitting so this is a trend uh, this general uh, uh, dash dash line curve is uh, the expected curve when we expect uh, ions as a uh, 
ions of the shape of ionic sphere and uh, without splitting we expect this curve but only mn2 plus and zn2 plus falls on this curve while the general metal uh, goes uh, below these curves in a two valley like curves um, uh, now this cr2 plus or cu2 plus are uh, uh, not like not in a bold circle are not there so it means like they do not form the proper octahedral complexes that's why we have not bold them we have not counted them actually because we cannot appro uh, I like we cannot determine their energy or ionic radii exactly so we have just predicted values that's why we have like uh, we have not mentioned it with a bold circles mn2 plus and zn2 plus falls here because of the it has a full d subshell so it uh, like it done do not uh, the effect of splitting does not affect uh, zn2 plus complexes much now we will study about the joint teller effect simple octahedral complexes are not absorbed for the cr2 plus and cu2 plus ions as i stated previously only estimated values for their radii are shown because we cannot uh, calculate uh, them precisely since both cr2 plus and cu2 plus ions have electron configuration with an odd number of electrons in the eg orbitals because the single electron in the case of cr2 plus or the third electron in the case of cu2 plus can occupy either one of the two degenerate eg orbitals now both system have degenerate ground states now, now the john taylor theorem states that such non-linear systems are not stable they undergo a distortion that makes the complex less symmetrical and splits the degenerate states which decreases the energy of the system the distortion and resulting decrease in the energy are collectively referred to as the john taylor effect neither the nature of the distortion nor its magnitude is specified means uh, we can we have no fixed criteria that the distortion will be by that thing or the mag by that magnitude we have not any fixed criteria and in fact they are difficult to predict in principle john taylor distortion are possible for many transition metal lines in practice however they are observed only for systems with an odd number of electrons in the eg orbitals such as cr2 plus and cu2 plus ions so basically what is happening here there is a electron remaining after filling all the orbitals then that electron have is free to go into the two orbitals two degenerate orbitals of eg so what is actually happening those degeneracy that the degeneracy is breaking further for further stabilization and this effect is known as john taylor effect so here uh, in the picture we can see that if uh, electron is free to go in this degenerate state dx square and dz square but for more stabilization uh, this further splits into dx square and dz squares now this thing is known as john taylor distortion now we talk about uh, the last point which is hydration energy and lattice energy the thermodynamical effects or consequences of orbital splitting in this uh, the hydration energy of, of metal ion is defined as the change in enthalpy for the following following uh, write up let's read about it crystal field splitting energies can be as large as several hundred kilojoules per mole which is the same magnitude as the strength of many chemical bonds or the energy change in most chemical reactions consequently the cfscs are important factors in determining the magnitude of hydration energies lattice energy and other thermodynamical properties of the transition metal so here at this point i want to say that the energy gaps and those things which are uh, those energy which are changing after splittings are no small energy they are in 100 kilojoules per mole which is quite significant amount and good enough for the breaking and making of creating bonds because they are almost uh, or significantly uh, equal to the strength of many chemical bonds so that affects the uh, these energy lattice energy and hydration energy because the hydration when we talk about hydration we are basically uh turning uh, that ions into the water and the aqueous solution we are observing so in that uh, many bonds are breaking and the new bonds are forming with the water so the the displating uh, energy tells about this bond uh, decides the bond energy and all this these things so 
if you talk about the hydration energy of metal ions defined as the change in enthalpy when you talk about the diff metal ion in gaseous state we dissolve into the water and the metal ion in the aqueous state so although hydration energy cannot be measured directly they can be calculated from experimentally measured quantities using thermochemical cycles so uh, we can calculate uh, those energy after that we will talk about the lattice energy the value of lattice energy for the fourth period metal dichlorides are plotted hence the atomic number in these figures so here we can see the this trend is the usual trend of considering them as an ionic sphere and this is the the trend of hydration energy and this is the trend of that ionic radii purple one and the green will dissolve the so the hydration energy and here in in this figure the purple will denote the lattice energy so these energies are changing because they are showing the large deviation from the smooth curve calculated assuming a spherical distribution of the electrons correcting for cf ce given the points shows as open circles which accept for ti2 plus and cr2 plus are close to calculated values the apparent deviation for these ions are caused by the fact that solution of the ti2 plus ion in water are not stable and cr2 plus does not form truly octahedral complexes now in case of lattice energy the fourth period metal dichlorides versus atomic number shows similar deviation from the smooth curve calculated assuming a spherical distribution of d electrons again illustrating the importance of cfsc the uh, it is not surprising that the explanation for the deviation from the curve is exactly the same as for the hydration energy data all the transition metal chloride dichlorides except mncl2 and zncl2 are more stable than expected due to cfsc uh, if we summarize all these uh, consequences of orbitals uh, splitting we have to, we can observe that distorting an octahedral complex by moving opposite ligands away from the metal produces a tetragonal or square planar arrangement in which interactions with equatorial ligands become stronger now because none of the d orbitals points directly at the ligands in a tetrahedral complex these complexes have smaller values of the crystal field splitting energy which is delta t for the tetrahedral the crystal field stabilizing energy the cfsc is the additional stabilization of a complex due to placing electrons in the lower energy set of d orbitals CFSC explains the unusual curves seen in plots of ionic radii hydration energy and lattice energy versus atomic number the john teller theorem states that a non linear molecule with a spatially degenerate electronic ground state undergoes a geometrical distortion to remove the degeneracy and lower the overall energy of the system means the bond length will change and other geometrical factors will change to remove that degeneracy and lower the energy of the overall system so hereby i uh, accomplish my presentation for my third year course ch3101 transition metals and this is my first presentation for and in my in the college i say kolkata and i hope you liked and enjoy enjoy this thank you so much